I'm John Storms, and we are going to do a walkthrough on a power injection box, and we got help from uh, Little Moo Moo there. Okay, um, so this is my power injection box. I'm also using CG1500, the Cable Guard 1500 enclosures for my uh, power injection boxes. Um, this one's actually kind of special because this is the enclosure that housed my very first Pixel controller, which was a uh, SAN Devices controller. Of course, the, that controller has been yanked out a long time ago. Uh, then this was used for a differential box. So some of the, um, the glands have been converted over. So like this I was using for something else when it was a differential box. Now I put a little LED there because I like power LEDs. And then I think I needed another power LED so I just drilled out a hole for that one. So, um, yeah, so this is the CG1500. Then I have the little uh, bud, uh, the bud vent, the IPV1115. And then I used a generous amount of, what do you call it, um, glue gun to, uh, you know, silicone from the glue gun just to seal it up. And I also put some dielectric grease, which is really good at catching dirt and crap. And this was on the roof pretty much all season. So, uh, you know, we just pulled them down the other week. Uh, this one goes up on the metal roof. And like all my controllers, I drill a little hole and then run a wire through there. And then I have, uh, since it's a metal roof, I have magnets. And I just use those magnets to clip onto that wire ring. And that holds them nice and secure for the whole season. No problem at all. And you can get these crazy high capacity magnets like hold 60 pounds or even 300 pounds. Okay, so uh, this is the vent. Obviously, there's a fan there. And then this I call my exhaust pipe, although I think it's actually pulling air in if I remember right. And basically, it is like on the controller, I have... A little vent one inch vent on the other side and it glues in see so I have this little tiny vent and then it sticks out a little bit so I push it through the hole and then I just hot glue it onto the other side so it's hot glued inside and out see you can see through there um, this is the small actually this is the smaller bud vent. So this is probably the IPV1116. And it's a, it's a smaller fan. And why? Well, I have the bigger fans on the controllers because I need the, uh, the four pin. Um, these are just a two wire fan. And so they run at full speed all the time. And it just runs up here to the distro board. Okay. So I've been getting ahead of myself. So the basic design of this is I have two power supplies. Uh, I have two Meanwell power supplies because this is actually sitting on my house. So if it catches on fire or something, these LRS 350 12 volt will actually shut themselves down. Um, so I have the power cord coming in through here. And like I said, and this is coming in through a gland that is three quarter inch wide. And then it feeds into the line neutral and ground. Now, I have another wire, which is line neutral and ground, running across here and feeding into there. So I have uh, these guys wired up that way, right? So it just daisy change from this one to that one for the power. And then, of course, I'm using the little uh, terminal connectors to make sure that, uh, you know, I have a nice solid connection. Uh, and ideally, I would have the little uh, plastic plate so I could avoid accidentally touching the, uh, the, the the screw downs, but they didn't come with them. I think, meanwhile, you can order them after the fact, and I need to do that. I need to order a bunch just so I don't accidentally shock and electrocute myself. <clears throat> so, um, there's a backer board in here. Uh, Holiday Coro sells a backer board specifically uh, with all the holes pre-drilled for two uh, Meanwell power supplies. So I use that for that, and it's and that works nice and well. And then I have just a uh, piece of plastic that I have cut uh, across, and then I have Velcro on the back that Velcros onto the power supplies. And I put it in such a way that it's not covering um, any vents.
then on each of the uh for each so this is really two power injection boxes in one right so from the power supply i have the v plus and the v minus feeding into the screw down connectors of the distribution board and i fuse again like on the controllers i fuse the inputs the other thing i do on my my uh, power supplies is i write down the year that i bought them um, and then uh, usually where i bought them from though it looks like i didn't do that for these so I, not even following my own rules but uh so the distro boards are from pixel pixelcontroller.com which is made by uh david pitts right and basically you have the the v plus and the v minus coming on in and then it gets distributed to eight different ports right so you can control up to eight different things or power eight different things and each one of them has their own fuse uh, and that's a five amp fuse and uh, typically you don't want to be power injecting more than five amps in any one place and uh, if you want to learn a lot about power injection uh, john spitzer has some really good uh, re videos about that on how to load balance and everything like that um, and then i have the x connect pigtails coming off of this and they feed back in now these are three core pigtails right and I use the three core uh, T's for the power injection into the lights themselves, which I don't think I have one up here with me at the time. But uh, so I, this goes into the bottom of the power injection T and then in both directions, either way, it provides positive and negative. Now on the power injection T, I have to pull that data pin Otherwise, what happens is the whole extension cord from the power injection box to the lights acts like a giant antenna. So I break that data connection. So why do I use three core uh, for the power injection when I only need positive and negative? Because I overbought the three core. So I have a lot of three core stuff, a lot of three core cables. And so uh, I just reuse what I had. But you could do two core with this as well. Um, for cabling, it does make it handy because I just have one kind of cable and it's just a matter of uh, dealing with the various links. So anyway, uh, back to here. So the little add-ons, I have the fan. It runs all the way back and plugs into right here, right through this Phoenix connector. And, um, you know, that's my fan. Then I also have an LED, which I put, I just put this fancy thing in just to keep the cables together. Uh, and that gives me a power LED. Now, a lot of times in the show, if uh, these are facing out to where the people see them, I'll put uh, electrical tape over them to block them. So sometimes they kind of defeat the purpose. Or I could just pull the plugs if I needed to. Um, trying to think if there's anything else to show on the power injection. The power injection boxes are, are fairly simple. Uh, sometimes people also double up the power injection with um, a distribution board, which is what this was back in 2017. So I had a, a um, uh, receiver board for the Falcon that, uh, you know, would run Cat5 in, getting the signal from the, uh, from the uh, F48. And then I would send it out to four different ports. And of course, those ports could be powered. Now, you could even use a regular Falcon controller as power distribution. It's really expensive to do that, but you could. Um, so these boards run about uh, seven, you know, 15 to $17 each. I forget exactly how much he sells them for. Um, but I do everything. I, do, I don't provide power from the controller at all for my show. I run everything through... Uh, these uh these power injection boxes because i figure if i burn up a board one of these boards if it's 15 20 bucks uh versus a controller board which is 200 dollars so for the most part that's uh that's what i do um so let me power it up because i'll show you the other thing i like a lot of people make these power distribution boards uh I, you know, I use the Falcon controller, so, you know, I use his distribution boards, but I like the fact that they light up. So at quick glance, I can see if I have a bad fuse, right? Because each one has its own little LED and that's nice. And then there's my LEDs. I got one for each power supply so I can see that they're, that they're working. And um, I have a little checklist that I run through each year to make sure everything's in good working order. Uh, so I'll, Anything that has a power supply, I go in and I make sure that all the connections are really tight. 
uh, make sure that these connections are tied up here. I go in and make sure that, you know, red and it's red and black, red and black. None of these are reversed because that obviously would cause problems. You know, check for blown fuses, make sure that, you know, the fans are working and all of that. So, um, yeah, lots, lots of good stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's sucking air in this way and out that way. Now, I know these guys have fans as well. And meanwhile, we'll kick them in when, uh, when it needs to. So they don't run necessarily all the time. And it closes up like that. It's not perfect airflow. But uh, I just need a little bit. It's not like I'm operating under uh, extreme conditions. Uh, let's see. Anything else? This one i got to keep an eye on. If I look down there a little bit, I'm seeing some uh, discoloration. Right? And uh, so this is one I'm going to want to check out. Make sure that you know nothing is loose there and that it's, uh, it's not overloaded. But uh, for the most part, it's, this has been working fine. So anyway, that is the basic anatomy of a power distribution box. Uh, again, um, not a lot to it, right? Most of the tricky part with uh, power injection is just doing your math to figure out, you know, how far you can you can go. And uh, this year I'm reducing, well, this past year I reduced the 30%, but my power injection scheme actually would have supported uh, nearly 100% brightness. So what I'm going to do this year is recalculate how, you know, what's a good safe distance, to how many pixels I can run before I need to power inject. And I'm planning on it to be around 200, but I'm actually going to do some experiments to make sure that's okay. And then uh, redo my math because uh, I think I'll be able to make these power injection boxes go a lot further because I got a lot of them. And as I add more lights, you know, I would have to add more power injection. So uh, if I scale that back, then uh, I can make these go a lot further. Okay, that's it.